Male octopuses have a big problem, female octopuses. Each male wants to mate and pass on his genes to a new generation. The trouble is, the female is often larger and hungrier than he is, so there is a constant risk that, instead of mating, the female will strangle him and eat him. The males have a host of tricks to survive the mating process. Some of them can quite literally mate at arm's length. Others sneak into a female's den disguised as another gal, or sacrifice their entire mating arm to the female and then make a hasty retreat. It's all very macabre. It's also a paradox. Octopuses are some of the most antisocial, unfriendly animals alive. Yet their bodies have evolved in such a way that they must mate in the most intimate way possible. The male has to insert his sperm directly into the female's body using one of his arms. The resulting mating practices are not just a curiosity, they are a window onto how octopuses have evolved into the creatures they are today. Octopuses and their close cousins the squid all belong to a group of animals called cephalopods. Both are actually mollusks, making them close relatives of oysters and limpets, but they have lost their shells. Octopuses tend to be profoundly antagonistic towards each other. Unlike gregarious animals like dolphins, they appear to see their own kind primarily as competition, and sometimes food. There's always the threat of cannibalism squid, which are downright social by comparison, made in a distinctly unromantic way. A male squid swims by and deposits sperm in one quick move outside of the female's body. She can decide later whether to accept it, but not so the octopus. Octopus mating is definitely different than other cephalopods, says marine biologist Jean Bowell of Millersville University in Pennsylvania. The male must deposit his sperm inside the female's body, at the risk of his life. There's always the threat of cannibalism, says Richard Ross of the California Academy of Sciences Steinhardt Aquarium. We don't know how often female octopuses eat the males, but Christine Hufford of the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute in California has seen it happen many times. She strangled him and took him back to her den to feed on in one instance, she and her colleagues observed two-day octopuses mating on a reef in Indonesia. After about 15 minutes of copulation, the female lunged and wrapped two arms around the male's bulbous body, his mantle. A few minutes later, the male was motionless. The female then carried the corpse to her den, where he presumably became dinner. In another instance, researchers watched a large female-day octopus off the coast of Micronesia. A small male mated with her a dozen times. But then the male went in for her 13th mating session, and the female turned on him. She strangled him and took him back to her den to feed on over the course of the next two days. Sexual cannibalism does happen in nature, witness the male eating praying mantis and black widow spiders, but strangulation during mating is a rarity, Ross says. It may not be all bad for the male, though. As Hufford and her colleagues point out in a 2014 paper describing one of the male-eating incidents, the felled male probably managed to fertilize some of the female's eggs, accomplishing his life's mission despite his unfortunate demise. What's more, females generally make hundreds or even hundreds of thousands of eggs, so just one successful copulation can produce a vast number of offspring. The male's main tool for this daunting endeavor is a specialized mating arm, known as the hecticatellus. When he is not engaged with a female, the mating arm works just like his other seven arms. It is able to bend, stretch and exert suction. But the mating arm also comes with extra bells and whistles. For big species, mating can last at least half an hour, for one, it has a central groove. The male releases packets of sperm called spermatophores into this group for their journey to the female. The arm's tip is also equipped with erectile tissue, not unlike that found in the human penis, which provides stiffness that helps guide the arm into the female's body. The arm goes in through one of the two siphons on the female's mantle, which she also uses to breathe, expel waste and jet out water for swimming. The destination for these spermatophores is the female's small oviducal gland, a sort of holding area. When she lays her eggs, which could be days or even months later, they will pass this area and be fertilized. The male needs to keep his mating arm tip inside the female long enough to transfer at least one spermatophore, and preferably more. In some smaller species this might take just a couple minutes, says Jennifer Mather of the University of Lethbridge in Alberta, Canada. But for big species like the giant Pacific octopus, mating can last at least half an hour. But being soft-bodied, they can't indulge for too long. If you get all wrapped up in mating, you're very, very vulnerable to predators, says Mather. As a general rule, it's the male octopuses that approach the females. Then the males tend to take one of two approaches in attempting insemination. The first is a risky position called the mount. 
The male grabs onto the female's mantle with all his arms, and reaches into her mantle with his mating arm, says Hufford. This style of mating tends to be more popular in species with shorter arms, says Hufford. Females of these species may be less likely to eat their mates. Possibly, species in which males are more likely to be devoured during sex have evolved longer arms, which would make mating a little safer for the males.